Hello, Miami. This is 305 Sports Down, your home podcast and channel for all things Miami sports related. I am Will, and I am going to be bringing you a very special episode today, as I haven't done one of these in a, in a bit. Uh, only one I've recruited recently on Cormani McLean, which, by the way, was, great. It was a great gift for the Miami Hurricanes. Um, but I do uh, want to talk about today's topic, and today's topic is basically, are the Miami Hurricanes really that bad, all right? So one of the, re- one of the main reasons why I'm bringing this up is because, um, especially it was mentioned graciously during the, during the Duke game, that the Miami Hurricanes do have a significant number of four stars, including a couple five stars on their football team. So basically, when it came to an uh, evaluation of talent by scouts, uh, by recruits, by by web agencies, like for example, or internet um, internet um, sites, like for example, 247 Sports, Rivals, On3, you know, very respectable sites. The Miami Hurricanes had um, a pretty much a top 15 recruiting class in 2021 and also a uh, second best recruiting class in the ACC. And they're always at least top three in the ACC when it comes to recruiting. So that is something that, uh, that boggles the mind, the fact that they're doing so poorly this year and they are four and five. No matter what you think about the, about the Canes, no matter what you think that – Chris the ball has um it just needs time or whether you think that they just suck blow the whole system up again and get somebody that understands you know offense in particular and uh, and development and whatnot um it is noted it is noted that uh, that the canes do on paper have better talent at least that's what it said you know on paper so I'm gonna be very honest with you um in, in terms of what I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna go over the season as uh, in a little bit I'm gonna go over the recruiting classes I'm also going to talk about Coach Cristobal and staff in general. So the, for the, the first thing I want to say is that the losses that the Canes have had this year and the way they've lost has been totally inexcusable. All right. The loss to Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee should not have been on the same field with Miami, let alone blow them out at home. That is probably the most embarrassing loss we have had since FIU. And the FIU game at least was a fight, you know, that the Canes were mostly in that game. But in the middle, middle Tennessee game, it felt like the Canes were never in it with, the, with the exception of a couple sequence of plays, especially when Jake Garcia came into the game. But that's a, that's a whole other story. Middle Tennessee basically outmanned, out-hustled, out-everything uh, the Miami Hurricanes, they, including out-coached our very, 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 very um, reputable coaching staff. And, and I mean guys like, you know, like Cristobal, Steele, Strong, Adai, you know, those individuals in particular that that – have accolades and have, you know, pretty much rings to to, to, uh, to show for it. Duke was another embarrassing game, all right? Duke got slaughtered last year on, on we went on the road. This year, they totally, um, again, manhandled the Miami Hurricanes as well, you know, at home. And let's not even talk about the 45-3 to three thrashing in front of a bunch of recruits against Florida State. Once again, at home, you know, in front of pretty much 70,000 people and people that, that you're trying to get to come to your football team, like young recruits, that a lot of schools, top five, uh, top five schools and power five schools are vying for, came in and saw that very putrid, disappointing performance by our collegiate football team. It was an all-around embarrassment that night. As far as uh, as Florida State goes, Florida State is a much better football team uh, this year. They're 23rd ranked in the country right now. Miami should have been more competitive. I don't care. This is a team that last year, the Miami Hurricanes, you know, fought tooth and nail at Doe Camel Stadium and lost because FSU in the end executed better on offense and the Canes did it on defense. And that's something that that needs to be said. But the bottom line is that it was a total embarrassment. Mario Cristobal was out coach. Kevin Steele was out coach. The offense was absolutely ridiculously disgusting. All right. That's how poor they are. Our offense is averaging 20 points a game. But we'll get into uh um into our into our offense in particular later on in this uh in this uh podcast but i just want to mention just a few things uh i want to bring up you know so i was doing some homework manny diaz's best class was probably uh, was more like the 2021 class all right and um and that class has underperformed this year under coach crystal ball now i will say this although it was expected a wide receiver in particular would be our weak point this season because of the grad because of the graduation of charleston rambo going to the nfl and also Mike Harley as well, you know, taking a chance in the NFL as well. That 60% of the production that um, that TVD had, you know, was gone. And it will be a bit of a groin pain for the Miami Hurricanes receiving core. But I didn't think that way because I saw flashes last year that this receiving core was going to be okay. Like I saw flashes from Brashard Smith. I saw flashes from Jacoby George. 
I saw flashes from Romello Brinson. I thought that, well, Mallory was very well used in the offense. You know, Keyshawn Smith as well expected a lot more from this season because of what I saw last season. The kid had five touchdowns last year under Rhett Lashley's offense and TVD being, you know, a first-time starter. So those are all things that uh, that I, I was like, listen, I think we're going to be okay. I expected, I'm not going to lie, I expected a 10-win season. All right, I saw no reason why Miami shouldn't win 10, uh, at least nine games, all right, in particular. You could have a slip-up. But I did expect Miami this year to beat Florida State prior to the season starting. And I expected expected Miami to slaughter both Duke and Middle Tennessee State. So that is something that has been totally inexcusable. So um, I just want to go over a few things about regarding, regarding the talent. Now, there's been a lot of said that we just don't have the talent. Mario needs his guys. We just don't have the talent. Mario needs his guys. But I'm going to read to you. I'm going to, I'm going to read to you. I'm going to show you on the screen as well. You know, um, how how these guys were evaluated, okay? And this is courtesy of Inside the U, and of course, this is coming from uh, 247 Sports. Okay, now, this is a 2021 class, right? The class that Manny Diaz did his best work with, all right, in particular. Jabari Ishmael, out of Columbus, four-star, can't get on the field, right? he's the def defensive end. Thad Franklin, who's uh, shared time this year, but is falling out of favor with the coaching staff because he hasn't been playing much. Four star at a Shamanan Madonna, a powerhouse school in the state of Florida. Chase Smith, four star, could barely, barely sometimes even sees the field, not as much as Keontre Smith does. Cam Kitchens, as well, at a Northwest, out of Northwestern High, of basically a football factory, four stars. Going on another end as well, Jacoby George at a plantation, four stars. Lawrence Seymour, okay, inside offensive lineman at a Miami Central High, four stars. Elijah Arroyo, we know he's out for the year, but he's played well, but four stars. Brashard Smith, right, as well, four stars out of Miami Palmetto. Continuing on, we then we have, of course, Leonard Taylor, five-star. James Williams, five-star out of Palmetto, and then James Williams out of American Heritage. Jake Garcia out of Logansville, Georgia, also from California, a uh, four-star quarterback. Romello Brinson out of Northwestern, four-star quarterback, all right? Not, I mean, these these calculations, they cannot all be wrong, all right? Jake Garcia was a highly sought-after quarterback, and he was committed to USC before he came over to Miami as well. James Williams was a beast and actually showed flashes last year, and this year, you can make cases, has been out of position on many occasions on defense. I'm not going to talk about Leonard Taylor. The guy's a flat-out beast. But Romello Brinson, a spectacular one-handed catch against uh, a very weak team in, in, in a, over in Connecticut, but nonetheless, it was a spectacular catch. Jacoby George had some really good catches against Pittsburgh, all right? And and Brashard Smith, you know, as well, you know, his speed, his electric speed was very hard and, and would create mismatches in general for various defenses. So, I mean, there's something not right here. Either, either the star system is incredibly flawed, which I do think there's flaws in the star system because how you play in high school, your competition is not the same thing at the collegiate level, you know, in particular. Or... This team, this, these guys just aren't being developed the way they need to be developed. And a lot of the guys that have done well for Mario this year have been guys that Mario has handpicked himself, right? Kobe Young, Henry Parrish, Hakeem Mesidor, Daryl Jackson, okay, as well. Um, those are guys that have done well in, 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 in which Mario Cristobal himself brought into the team. A lot of the Manny Diaz guys are not performing to their to their abilities one of two things either they're not being developed they're out of position it's uh been it's a much more complicated scheme you know both on offense and defense with some of these guys that they're have not yet acclimated i don't know i'm not in that war room with crystal ball i'm not at practice all right try to be but i'm not at practice you know to evaluate what's going on but something's not clicking here all right 247 sports rivals cannot be wrong about all these guys so there has to be something schematically or there's a disconnect between the players and the coaches all right and it's very difficult it's very difficult you know for a lot of the fan base and i get it you got to give a guy three years at least because he needs his guys in all right we've seen it with mike norvell right mike norvell they wanted to hang him after his first year and last year let's not even talk about this there's already they're already ready to write prime time a check to come back to florida state and coach that football team but in Mike Norvell's third year, through his transfer portal acquisitions, recruiting the right guys for his program, Florida State is ranked and about to make a pretty good bowl game. All right. I would say, you know, as far as um 
as far as uh as far as talent goes, you know, in particular. And they beat the start out of Miami. And every game they've lost this year, they've lost to a ranked opponent. They haven't been and they've been pretty competitive. They haven't really been blown out. All right. Like the Canes have been totally outmatched, outmanned the entire season. All right. Florida State has hung and fought and beat LSU. All right, which just beat Alabama. Now I'm gonna get into that. Right now you look at Brian Kelly, not his guys. Brian Kelly beats Alabama, and LSU was able to rebound out of a, out of the upset loss to Florida State. You look at Mike Elko over there. Mike Elko over there at Duke. All right, Duke's roster and David Cutliffe was garbage. Right, at least the way it looked last year. He's got those guys playing higher than their, than what their star rating was this past season. All right, you can't deny it at all. Then, of course, my boy, Rhett Lashley, although SMU is 5-4, and four, his team just put up 77 points against a Power 5 team like Houston. So there's something, there's something that is not coalescing, you know, within, within, uh, within this roster. I don't know what it is. And because Mario Cristobal has coaching experience, I am giving him a pass this year, a bit of a grace period. But by, the, by next year and the third year, there has to be drastic improvement. All right. I mean, right now, the way the Canes are, you're 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 lucky to go six and six, finish your seven and six, win your bowl game is a success to some extent because Miami hasn't won a bowl game since Mark Rick's first year. And that's another guy, too. He took Al Golden's players. Mark Rick did Al Golden's players, won nine games, a bowl game, and then won the Coastal the following year, winning 10 games. OK, so that's what I'm trying to say is that you do have situations where first year coaches have taken other people's guys that have underachieved or have not performed and, and been able to be successful, you know, that, at least that first year. However, there have been times where they show they can't recruit, all right, and they fall apart, i.e. Larry Coker. You know, he had basically a Ferrari and then turned into a lemon, all right, you know, with the Canes, okay? So we'll, we'll give that as an example as well. You know, Dan Mullen had a pretty solid team, didn't want to recruit, and the Gators were garbage this year. Billy Napier ha has a lot of cleaning up to do. But even the Gators look a little decent sometimes comparable to the Canes, okay? They did beat a good team in Utah. So what I'm trying to get at is, like, you know, you, I am willing to give Mario time. However, I'm not going to excuse, you know, what's been going on this year. Kevin Steele the same. Kevin Steele, I want to see what he does with a guy like Carmani McLean starting and uh, and possibly, hopefully, Damari Brown or whomever they could bring in bring into the transfer portal. Because the Miami Hurricanes are desperate for cornerbacks. It's one thing they do need. They have a solid safety. They have solid safeties, okay, in Cam Kitchens and also Avante Williams as well. James Williams, although has a rough year, I think James Williams it fits in better in a striker position, taking over for Gilbert Frierson. And I think Keontre Smith plays that position this year as well uh, for next season. If he decides to stay, I don't know if, he, if, if he's going to be a guy that goes to the transfer portal. He's not happy with the coaching staff. But nonetheless, I think that James Williams would be better off, you know, as a striker where he plays both a hybrid linebacker safety role than being a full-fledged safety or being a full-fledged linebacker. Okay, I think that that's something that he might be better uh, better at doing. All right, so the elephant in the room is this. I'm giving Kevin Steele a bit of a pass, although the big plays have been horrendous. Adjustments have not been good, but there have been flashes in Miami's defense that gives that gives me hope. Like I said, let's see what happens when they tweak the roster a little bit, especially at the secondary position. Why do I say that? Before the Florida State game, Miami was one of the top teams in the ACC in stopping the run and sacking the quarterback. And you have to admit that front seven has been pretty solid, all right, with Leonard Taylor, Hakeem Mesidor, Corey Flagg is having a pretty good year you're right, as well. And uh, Daryl Jackson has had a pretty solid year as well. So that front seven has been pretty consistent throughout most of the year, not so much the secondary, okay? So that's something to, to really think about for next season. But I want to get into the elephant in the room. Josh Gaddis has to go. He needs to go. I'm really sorry. I know there's been injuries. I know that um, you know that that your starting quarterback going down and leaving in, against Florida State, and it's. I'm sorry. Josh was given. Coach Gaddis was given a Ferrari last year. Tyler Van Dyke is the is the reigning ACC Rookie of the Year. All right, he had six games straight of 300 yards. It looked like last year. In the position the Canes were in, you never thought they would lose. And if they were to lose, the fight was going to be there. This team on offense looked, looks apathetic. There's no energy. Um, they can't block anybody. All right, You've, uh, The line has had some hit or misses in certain games, but you can't block anybody right? as well. The wide receiving core on screens has been atrocious in blocking their, 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 respective, uh, their respective DB. 
it's just been bad. All right. Execution has been has been terrible. Play calling takes too long sometimes to get started. I've mentioned over and over again, this team is an air raid, uh, pass first, up tempo type of team. All right. That is what they're built to be. All right. And they displayed that against North Carolina, which I think is Miami's best offensive performance this year against a team not named Bethune. Okay. So that's what I think about Josh Gaddis. The mesh routes are good. I like those routes. That's actually my favorite route that he runs. However, they're also routes that take a long time to develop because they're trying to cause chaos between the, the wide receivers and the DBs until one gets free and you can throw a touchdown pass. But if you're not blocking, those routes aren't going to be as effective. So the routes take too long to develop. To give him credit, he has adjusted, but it hasn't been enough. All right, wide receivers can get separation. It's hard for me to believe that, that these four stars, all right, all of them are this bad. There's got to be something wrong. Gaddis, listen, you have not, I understand what Mario's saying is being diplomatic. Oh, Gaddis is still a good play call, whatever you want to say. But the bottom line is, it's inexcusable. It's inexcusable that you go nine quarters with these kinds of athletes, the way they were highly touted and recruited, nine quarters and not score a touchdown. It is pathetic. All right. Pathetic. Pathetic. It is horrific and ridiculous. Nine, there's no excuse for nine quarters. And I guarantee you, against Georgia Tech, they probably won't get in the end zone until maybe the second quarter if they do. So let's let's say maybe 10 quarters. So what I'm getting at. So what I'm getting at is, is that Josh Gaddis needs to go. Dan Enos got fired for less. All right. Dan Enos in Mar and Manny Diaz's first year. The offense underachieved. They had some moments, but the offense underachieved. All right. And that's what Manny Diaz went, went with Red Lashley, which to me was an amazing hire and it paid dividends for the Canes. You never thought, they never thought the Canes were ever out of a game. And I remember last year, people thought he was a bad coach because, you know, Derek King struggled early on. We found out Derek King was probably hurt, was playing hurt. T TVD comes in and they just ball. All right. Another thing as well, this team, last year's team, was like eight points away from being a 10 and two team. So that's another thing that bothers me. That's why I thought that Mario would get us to 10. I thought the defense would be, would be good enough, you know, to, to get us to 10 wins alongside the offense as well. But this team right now is bad. And I think the offense is a major problem. Can stop the, can, can run block, can pass protect, um, can block, can do anything, can catch balls sometimes, can get separation. The bottom line is, is Josh Gaddis has got, to go. There's been too much regression, especially in the offensive side of the ball. So do I think the Canes are really that bad? I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think with if we had Rhett Lashley's offense and Rhett Lashley was still the OC at the University of Miami, I think we'd be still averaging 30 points a game. I'm sorry. I think we do. Our running The running will still be a problem because this line is not built for run blocking. In particular, there was a, it was a problem last year. They averaged about 3.8 yards per carry, if I'm not mistaken, as a football team. But he would get a lot more out of uh, out of his players. That's just what I think. If we saw Rhett Lashley as an offensive coordinator or Kendall Bryles. And I know that's somebody that a lot of Canes fans hate because, you know, he flipped down the U and uh, and he, he coached at Florida State. And now he's at, you know, he's probably trolling us over at Arkansas to get more money at Arkansas. So he, he wouldn't come here. But the bottom line is, I think that Kendall Bryles' schematics, his scheme, that up tempo uh, pace that they ran up in Baylor and so on fits this fits this team better, and I think he would have been a better fit for this offense at least this year than Josh Gaddis, who's trying to turn us into a Big Ten team. All right. Another thing I don't like about Gaddis, and I'm gonna bring it up with a buddy of mine, William Quintero, who should be coming on next week. The formations are too tight. All right. Instead of spreading them out, sometimes sometimes they're way too tight. All right. So that's basically it. So again, all right. I'm giving Mario a grace period, but I'm not giving uh, Josh Gaddis one. I think Coach Cristobal needs to make a change at the end of the season at offense, all right? I know it's going to be hard, a new scheme you got to learn, but as of right now, an air raid type of uh, pass-heavy offense is the best thing for this football team, especially the way it's built. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like what you heard. I know it's not usually my happy-go-lucky self, but the bottom line is that I'm a pissed-off Canes fan. I'm frustrated. I want to see this team return back to its glory days, all right? And I still think it can. You know, we just got to have to have, to have the right pieces and the right scheme for the right personnel. All right, everybody, once again, I am Will. Stay safe. God bless. If you like what you heard, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share. Stay safe. God bless. See you soon.